Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about Coriza, Coriza which is called a common cold. So actually, the Coriza is a kind of, by definition, is a kind of viral infection that is actually affecting the upper respiratory tract. Mostly, about ninety-nine percent of the uh, infection of the upper respiratory tract that is causing the common cold is actually caused by viruses, not bacteria. So that is it. So, but before we go further, we have to show the anatomical location where actually this virus, uh, this viruses affect in terms of common cold. So now this is the anatomy of it. This we have the nasal cavity. This is the nose inside nose. This is a kind of section. This is the nasal cavity. These are the sinuses. So this are the nasal conchi. The two nasal conchi. So this is where so we will, the, any air you inhale, it has to pass through this then go to down to the to your trachea yeah. so that's it so what are the function of the sinuses the sinuses they are filled with air and they are also having the kind of epithelial tissue that are found inside the uh, nasal tissue because they can produce also uh, uh, mucus actually so, so they are filled with air their function is to make your head to be lighter because if to say we didn't have this uh, this sinuses, we cannot be able to carry our head because our head will be more heavier. And another function of the sinuses is to produce a resonance of your voice. Yeah, to produce a resonance of your voice. So that's it. So we will see the kind of changes that may happen uh, when the when a person is uh, catch with cold, common cold. So that's it. So these viruses actually affect the nasal cavity, the sinuses, where we, you can have. Uh, soft tissue then it affects also the, the trachea but the most common side it affects it affects mostly the nasal cavity so that is it so this coriza the causes of this coriza or the, the viruses that are causing them that is causes the most important virus that is causing this coriza is reno virus reno viruses Reno, rain means nose. So, from the name of the virus, it means nose. So, we have the, the second most common, we have the coronavirus. But this is not the coronavirus that is causing the COVID 19. The coronavirus causing the COVID 19 is a mutated one. It's problematic. It's not the same as the, this coronavirus. So, that is it. Then we have influenza virus. Influenza virus. This can even affect chickens, not only human beings. To uh, influenza virus, then to some lesser extent, we have para influenza. Para influenza virus. So, all these are viruses. So, this, but this is the most important, this is the most common 90% of cases, or 99% it's caused by this and this. So, that's it. So, why this virus are affecting mostly the, the upper respiratory tract, that is the nose, because here it is having cooler temperature than the down down respiratory uh, that is to the lungs and whatsoever because here it is more cooler so this virus can grow here and then can produce infection but the moment they go down and down then the more deeper they are going the more the temperature is increasing of our body so the more warmer so that's why it is hardly for them to cause infection in the lower areas so that is it so now we have to see the pathogenesis how these viruses are causing this uh coriza that is pathogenesis. Pathogenesis. For example, if I can take a kind of example of uh, one cell from here, because a uh, virus actually enters into the cell and then cause infection. So if you can draw a kind of cell, for example, from that uh, nose cavity, nasal cavity, if you see this is a cell, this is a cell because they are having kind of this so this virus they definitely enters into this uh this cell so if they pro reproduce and reproduce because they can use the cellular component and then reproduce themselves into a lot of viruses a lot of viruses so a lot of cells that are infected by these viruses a lot of cells that are infected by these viruses so this will lead these cells to be releasing a kind of signals to be releasing some kind of cytokines and these cytokines can retract or they can draw the attention of our immune system. 
our immune system like macrophages like neutrophils so that's like mast cells like that so if they draw the attention of this immune cells of, of our body as no fields especially if someone who is having a kind of allergic rhinitis so these immune cells they will start to be actually producing a kind of cytokines so that cytokines or some kind of uh, uh, um, factors for example the most important uh, important factor that is produced by this immune system is called histamine histamine then histamine leukotriens leukotriens so these are the most important histamine can cause this vasodilation here the blood vessels that are found here they are going to be dilated so including that of the sinuses they are going to be dilated so if they are dilated then more blood will come here so that more mucus will be produced and the mucus how it is produced from the fluid of our body so that is it we have to uh, actually know this the mucus that is produced and the mucus that is produced is actually a kind of not thick mucus it is thin mucus the mucus is thin mucus very very watery so and it is produced from the uh, water of our body that is the fluid of our body so that is it so this actually can cause a lot of mucus that is produced here it is the one that is causing the nasal congestion someone will uh, experience his nose is flocked with a lot of mucus so it the mucus will start to drain here that is called the runny nose yeah it is going to be start uh, draining here so that is it and before you move further is this para influenza actually we have to be very very careful in children because if someone who is a child for example maybe from three months to from three months to five years old child or all children if they have infection due to this para influenza we have to treat it early because it can cause a kind of severe respiratory tract uh, distress so in children only in children three months to five years so that is it so now we are going to see uh, the mode of transmission how this virus is transmitted like this transmission so it is transmitted from person to person so when the infected person the person that is already uh, infected with the virus that is he's having the common cold so when he sneezes out because there is sneezing in the symptom when he sneezes out or he, when he cough so there is uh, he used to uh, withdraw a kind of uh, air droplet a kind of droplet from his nasal cavity from this from the sneezing so when he that uh, air droplet is containing the virus a lot of thousands of virus so when you inhale are you as a healthy person this is a healthy person this is the already infected person so you as the healthy person you if you inhale uh, no matter how small the virus are you inhale so definitely you are going to catch up with the virus with the common cold that's why any person who is having common cold is advised to be closing his nose when uh, or uh, to draw his face away away from uh, healthy people to reduce the mode of transmission so another trans mode of transmission is for example when infected person touch a kind of like table for example table or some kind of object so when he touched a kind of object and then you as a healthy person then touch them within hours after the infected person has already touched the object then you can and if you take your hand for example and touch your nose or your mouth then you can get also infected so this is the mode of transmission mostly the most important is through aerosol that is the air droplet when if an infected person sneezes so he definitely infect others so this is the mode of transmission so now we are going to see the signs and symptoms we are going to see signs and symptoms so the most important sign uh, symptom then the person uh, the patient will be complaining of runny nose runny nose because we said a lot of mucus which is very very watery it's not thick it's very thin it is produced here then definitely the person will be complaining of a lot of mucus drawing from his uh, nose that is called the runny nose so that is it then 
after running us and they mark you the the mucus is actually a kind of watery mucus very very watery mucus it is not thick so and whitish also then we have anosmia anosmia when we say anosmia means uh loss of smell loss of sensation of smell but it is temporary because there are some people that they are born with anosmia that's which is permanent they never uh sense a smell so that it is due to another syndrome like kalman syndrome but this is uh, temporary so the moment he get uh better or he if he uh, uh he if he is treated if he is treated uh from the infection then his sense of smell will return back to, to normal so that's it then he will going to have a headache why he's going to have headache because these sinuses are going to be filled up with a lot of mucus a lot of mucus here so if these sinuses are filled up with uh, filled up with a, uh, a lot of a lot of mucus so definitely the head will be uh paining him so he the patient will be complaining of headache so and also he's going to be having a kind of fever but the fever is low grade his body temperature will rise a little bit it is not like the fever of malaria which is very very high fever but it is his kind of the temperature will rise maybe to maybe 37 point maybe like 29 or 28 very very uh low grade fever so that is it then he is going to be having sneezing this is another classical symptom of this from common cold sneezing because this uh nasal cavity is irritated by that inflammatory uh, mediators and then the the virus also so when it is in, uh, uh, infiltrated by that then we have trigeminal nerve that will be carrying information from here then to the brain and then brain will send a kind of sneezing reflex then the person will be sneezing and the purpose behind this sneezing is to get rid out of the of the virus through his nose so that's why it you are advised to if a person is having a common cold is advised to be closing his nose when he wants to sneeze or withdraw his face away from healthy people so that to uh, prevent the spreading of the virus so that is it so now we are going to see the treatment the treatment actually the for the treatment of this uh, common cold some people make a mistake of using antibiotics and antibiotics can never function here because it is not caused by uh, by by bacteria but they are caused by what by virus so antibiotic can no longer uh, cannot function in uh, virus so we usually advise the patient to drink plenty of water plenty of water intake why because we say that a lot of mucus is produced and that mucus is produced from the water of our body and you are losing the water through the nose so that's why you are advised to keep hydrating yourself with water so that to replace the water that is used in the process of producing of this uh, mucus so that is it then drinking of plenty of water and then the most important uh, drug to use um, is paracetamol paracetamol that is acetaminophen acetaminophen so this is for the headache yeah then you you will use antihistamine remember we, we already said that the most important cytokine for for uh, production of that mucus and that nasal congestion is histamine so if you give antihistamine for example the most important one to use is h1 blockers which is called diphenhydramine 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 so this is the most important antihistamine to use so this will definitely decrease the level of histamine that is here so that it will decrease the vasodilation then decrease vasodilation can lead to decrease in the production of the mucus so the person will get better actually